to read another story to you. I decided that today I'm going to read to you a tale of Peter Rabbit. And I purposely chose to read it outside because it's about a little rabbit who takes an adventure in a garden. So, The Tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter. Now, in this story, Beatrix Potter is both the author and the illustrator. So, here we go. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits, and their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, dears, said old Miss Rabbit one morning, you may go into the fields or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there, and he was put in a pie for Mr. McGregor. Now run along and don't get into mischief. I'm going out. Then old Miss Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail were all good little bunnies. They went in the lane to gather blackberries. Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden. He squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and then some French beans. Then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But round the end of the cucumber frame, whom shall he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting out young cabbages, but he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was most dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, for he had got forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages. And the other shoe, he lost amongst the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on four legs and went faster, so that I think he might have got away altogether if he had not unfortunately ran into the gooseberry net and got caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass, brass buttons quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears, but his sobs were overwhelmed by some friendly sparrows who flew to him with great excitement and implored him to exert himself. That means, come on, Peter, come on. Mr. McGregor came up with a seed, which he intended to pop on top of Peter, but Peter wiggled just in time leaving his jacket behind. And he rushed into the tool shed and jumped into a can. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in if it had not been full of so much water. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath the flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each. Presently, Peter sneezed. Ka-choo! Mr. McGregor was after him in no time. He tried to put his foot upon Peter, who jumped out of the window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter. He went back to his work. Peter sat down to rest. He was out of breath and trembling with fright. He had not the least idea of which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in the can. After that time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He 
found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had a large pea in her mouth and she could not answer. She only shook her head at him. Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he came more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to the pond where Mr. McGregor filled his water cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back towards the tool shed, but suddenly bushes. But presently, as nothing happened, he came out and climbed upon the wheelbarrow and peeped over. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was towards Peter, and beyond him, started running as fast as he could go along the straight walk behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him out of the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and is safe at last in the wood outside of the garden. Mr. McGregor hung up the little jacket and the shoes for the scarecrow to frighten the birds. Peter never stopped running or even looked behind him until he was home at the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor in the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking. Hmm. She wondered what he had done with all of his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a fortnight. I'm sorry to say that Peter was not very well during She gave him a dose, one tablespoon to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail had bread and milk and blackberries for their supper. 